Hello, welcome to another episode of Massachusetts. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay. How do Alaskan Malamutes compare to Siberian Huskies as pets and as sled dogs? Well, let's talk about it. Today I'm going to talk about comparing Alaskan Malamutes and Siberian Huskies. And this was actually an episode idea that came from a couple of our subscribers who they, they know I've had both breeds and they've wondered how they both compare. So I'm going to talk today about the comparisons that, I, that I've experienced that my dogs, um, that I saw in my dogs over the years. And um, you know, your mileage or <laughs> your experience may, may vary. So first, a little history. I had a German Shepherd Husky mix for 15 years, and she was a real backpacking dog. She used to carry a pack, and we went backpacking all over the country. Hiked a, a major section of the Appalachian Trail with her, um, parts of the Continental Divide, uh, the Pacific Crest, um, on and on. When she passed, we wanted another dog. And so we got an Alaskan Malamute, which I had always been interested in, got an Alaskan Malamute puppy. And anyway, one thing led to another. We had, we had our puppy, she grew up when, when she was a year old, we got a male that was a year old, and then we ended up breeding two litters out of them, kept all the dogs, and we had a team of 12 Alaskan Malamutes. Um, when I had the Alaskan Malamutes, we used them recreationally, and at the time, we also owned an outdoor adventure company, and we used to do guided tours with our sled dogs, with our sled dog team. And so we had them uh, as a working team for the better part of 13 years. Uh, they eventually all aged out and passed on. And so for a brief period of time, we had no dogs. Um, three years ago, I adopted Bandit, who's running around. He's over in the back right now. I adopted Bandit, who's a purebred Siberian Husky. And then about four months later, we adopted Shiva, who's lying down right here, who is also a purebred Siberian Husky. And Having come from the world of Malamutes, I was really surprised at how different the Huskies were. So it's that history I'm going to be drawing from as I kind of share some of these, um, these thoughts and comparison and contrast with you. The first thing we're going to talk about is physical comparison. So the, the major physical difference between the Alaskan Malamutes and the Siberian Huskies is size. The Alaskan Malamutes are much bigger. My smallest Malamute was 75 to 80 pounds. Our largest was 95, and all the rest were somewhere in between. Uh, there's a lot of people who breed Alaskan Malamutes that are even bigger, um, but they don't work very well. I mean, they're big, impressive dogs, but ours were real working sled dogs, and, and we found that at 80, 85 to 95 pounds was a perfect size for them. Um, the difference here is the Siberian Huskies are much smaller. It always surprises people how small my Huskies are comparing that when you think of how much they do. Shiva, <laughs> when she's soaking wet, might weigh 41 or 42 pounds. Bandit has put on some muscle since he's grown up. He's about four years old right now. And Bandit is probably about 47 pounds. But no matter how you slice it, these two dogs, my two Huskies, combined would be equal to one of my Alaskan Malamutes. So that is the biggest difference right there, it's just on size. Otherwise, as sled dogs, they have a lot of similarities. They Both breeds have um, webbed toes uh, for walking on the snow. Both breeds have the kind of um, wolfish markings. They have the double coat. They have the, um, you know, the curled back tail. They have... Um, the masks around their eyes for kind of protecting, you know, snow glare from their eyes. Um, but really the biggest difference there, physical difference, has to do with size. Another comparison between them has to do with behavior. Um, Behavior-wise, they're, they're playful. Both breeds, the Alaskan Malamutes and the Siberian Huskies, are really very um, loving. They like to snuggle, they like pets. Um, they love to be, um, they, they love to be acknowledged, they love to, to play, they love to be scratched. 
Um, that way they're very, very similar. The big difference I've seen is that my Alaskan Malamutes did not like water. Um, when, when they would encounter water, even on these hot, hot days in the summertime, when they would encounter water, they would reach out and feel to see if it was frozen, if the surface of the water would support them. If it didn't, they would not go on it. Um, that was true of all 12 of my Malamutes. They would not go in water. Um, even on the hottest, hottest days, they would drink, but they would not walk in the water. They wouldn't swim in the water. They would barely wade in it. They'd step in it, but that was it. Um, to them, water should be frozen and hard, and they should be able to run across it. My Huskies are very different in that. Um, the, both, of, both Shiva and Bandit like to go in the water. Bandit in particular likes to swim. So when we're out for a biking run um, in the warmer weather before we get snow, um, Bandit, both dogs, will always, will, I'll cool them. So we'll run for about a mile, mile and a half, and I always make sure to stop someplace where they can take a dip. And they'll both go in the water. Shiva likes to wade in. She'll wade in up to her belly. But that's kind of it. She doesn't like to lose contact with the, uh, the bottom of, of uh, the lake or the river. Um, Bandit will go in and swim. Bandit likes to swim. I've never seen anything like it. First time I saw that, it completely surprised me because it was such a contrast between the Malamutes and what I was seeing with these Huskies. Prey drive. So how do the Alaskan Malamutes compare with the, the Huskies on prey drive? Well, both breeds have a high prey drive. Their prey drive in terms of chasing, catching, harming small animals is high. Um, my Malamutes, that's what I started with, um, my Malamutes would take wildlife whenever they got a chance. Um, when they were little, they would get frogs. When they were larger, they'd get wild turkeys. Um, you know, when we were out, when we were running the dogs and it was hunting season, they would dive into like a gut pile if some hunters had been out there. Um, my Malamutes, I could not trust with any other animals. Um, you know, I never, I never exposed them to cats or small dogs, whatever, because it just, it could go bad quick. Um, the Huskies are definitely, they like, they're very interested in squirrels and chipmunks and when they see deer or ducks or beavers, I mean, they're always, uh, or snakes. They always want to go after it. Um, we've, in particular, when um, when the dogs are off leash at home, we've had some problems with Shiva, in particular, going after chickens. And so, both Malamutes and Huskies have a high prey drive. I'm sure there are many people who have gotten their dogs to tolerate other small animals, particularly their own animals. But that being said, it's not something that comes naturally. If you want to. Um, have a uh, Malamute or a Husky and not have problems with small animals, you're going to have to work on that because inherently they have a very high prey drive. All right, eating and feeding. This is where I've seen probably the most surprising and <laughs> unexpected difference between the Malamutes and the Huskies is in feeding and how they eat. Now, my Malamutes, they would eat everything that was in front of them. Um, they would get fed once a day, they were fed very generously, and they would eat everything they had as soon as put in front of them. And they would be more than willing to eat more if I gave them more. In fact, over the years I've seen, um, I mean I kept my Malamutes really fit because they were working dogs. But I've seen a lot of people who've had a single Malamute and they, they take pride, I don't know why, but with Malamutes people take pride in, the, in having a dog that weighs over 100 pounds. And I've, most of the Malamutes I've seen that are not working tend to be very heavy, ultimately kind of lazy dogs. I don't really think it's very good for them. The Huskies are completely different. I'm amazed is to get the Huskies to eat their entire, it takes them all day to eat their single bowl of food that I give each of them. Um, it takes them all day. And they, they, they like their food. Um, they like treats, but they'll, they're very um, slow eaters, and when they're full, they're full. They just stop. When they're full, they're not interested in anything. They're not even interested in treats. Shiva, who again is so lean and is so athletic, putting a pound on her is impossible. I mean, she eats what she needs and no more. And so that is a huge difference that I've seen between Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes. Housing is another big difference between the two breeds. 
obviously the Malamutes being larger need more space than the Huskies do. Um, in addition, when I had my, my Malamutes, I didn't just have large dogs, I had a lot of them. I mean, the 12 of them combined were <clears throat> probably about half a ton of dog. There was no way that they could live inside with us. And in reality, they didn't want to. So I'm standing inside right now one of the pens that used to ha house our Malamutes. This is one of the smaller pens. I have two more over here. Um, now the, uh, the Huskies just use it as an outdoor play space. But my Malamutes lived out here all the time. My Malamutes never wanted to go inside. So each of my, my, my Mals lived about <clears throat> 13 to 14 years. And in that time, as they were living, I don't think any of them, after they were puppies, spent more than an hour indoors in their entire life. If we ever brought one of the Malamutes inside, they were very, very uneasy. The first thing they would do is they'd look for the door, they'd find the door, they would get down to where they could feel any kind of a draft and just ho and hover by it. When they were inside, you could tell the echoes from off of the, all four walls was disturbing to them. My Malamutes never wanted to be inside. They spent 99.9% .9 of their entire lives in the outdoors. In the winter time, my Malamutes were outside and they never used their dog houses. In the winter, my Malamutes slept out in the snow, no matter how hard it snowed or how much it drifted. My Malamutes would go into the dog houses in the summer to get shade. Um, the Huskies, of course, are smaller and I only have two. And so Bandit and Shiva live inside with us. And so they are total house pets when we're inside. They watch TV with us. They hang around when we're having, when we're having dinner. Uh, they sleep with us. They're indoors, they're happy, and they're completely content being inside. Um, they're also very happy to be outside. They love this pen. But, um, but you know, housing them is very different. They live indoors as indoor pets. So there's a perfect segue, let's talk about as pets, the difference between Alaskan Malamutes and the Siberian Huskies. Well as pets, both breeds are wonderful dogs, but you have to know what you're doing. Sled dogs are not the kind of breed for first time dog owners. They need a lot of exercise, they have a high prey drive, they, um, I won't say they're challenging to train, but they're not, they're not as trainable as say like a Golden Retriever or, or some of those breeds, or a German Shepherd. They take um, really an experienced dog handler. <clears throat> um, but as pets, they're both wonderful, wonderful breeds. Um, walking them, um, Alaska Malamutes and the Huskies get a lot of comments from people. Um, people want to know about them. Um, you know, they make wonderful pets. I think that as house pets, the Siberian Huskies are better because they're just more tolerant and smaller to be indoors. So they're easier to live with for that reason. But temperament wise, they're both wonderful pets. So finally, we come down to how do Alaska Malamutes and Siberian Huskies compare as sled dogs? Well, as sled dogs, um, I again, I was really surprised when I, when I got the Huskies. Is when I had our Malamutes, we were kind of, well, that's what we knew. And we used to look down at Huskies. We used to like having our big dogs. And when I would take my clients out, people loved, you know, taking pictures with them. And the Malamutes were exactly like uh, what they kind of pictured when they go dog sled, big, powerful draft dogs. And my Malamutes, a typical run when we would go sledding with the Malamutes, we would go out and we, were, we would routinely do 14 or 15 miles um, a day. And the kind of the sequence I had my dogs on was they would do a 14 or 15 mile run, each of them, um, about three times a week um, during the, the six months of the cold weather. The Huskies, I only have two. So it's a little bit different is uh, because I only have the two and they're pulling me, their combined weight is about 75 pounds. My weight is 200. So these guys are really pulling a lot when they're pulling me. And when we go out, a typical run with my bandit and Shiva, we go out and we do six miles a day. We've done as many as 15. Sometimes we do as few as four, but basically six is kind of typical for us. Um, the big difference, so their miles are shorter, but I think that's mostly because I only have two compared to, I typically used to run eight with my Malamutes. And of course, my mile meets their combined weight outweighed me, so that we could go a lot further. But that said, is the Huskies are definitely faster. 
Um, Siberian Huskies are not the fastest sled dogs in the world. Alaskan Huskies are, are the ones that are people are running now. But the Siberian Huskies, they're definitely faster than my Malamutes were. They, they're out there, they sprint more, they have a faster trot. Um, they're, just, they're just faster. That's the biggest difference that I've seen right there. Um, it surprised me. I was used to with my mouths kind of going on at a good steady um, long trot. Um, these guys, they like to sprint as long as the, the weather isn't too hot for them. So as sled dogs, I think pound for pound, I can't believe how, these, how much weight these little dogs can pull compared to the large Malamutes and also speed-wise, these Huskies are much faster too. So that's been a big difference. Some other differences, some other comparisons, is their voice. Um, my Malamutes used to howl. They used to really kind of sing every single night. It sounded very much like wolves. So where, where we lived is my neighbors never complained because it was actually kind of an exotic, fun sound. I never had, and I lived in a, I had a 32 acre farm, so I didn't have people right on top of me. But when my Malamutes would howl, people liked it. And so I never had any complaints. It was really exotic, it was fun. It was one of the things that made the Malamutes appealing. The Huskies um, are, are really very vocal. They talk and they kind of make a lot of vocalizations. Um, they don't bark a whole lot, but they do vocalize. And we can get them to sing. So sometimes if we want them to howl, we, we'll kind of do like a family howl. We can get them to sing. But they don't do it all the time. Um, certainly nowhere near as often as the Huskies did. So their voices, their vocalizations, are that's a, a difference I've seen between the Huskies and the Malamutes. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, if you liked it, and if you have an idea for an episode, please suggest it, and we'll see if we can't work it in. I, the, I do want to work on one comparing and contrasting recreational dog sledding, dog mushing, compared to uh, commercial dog mushing, from my perspective, having done both. And so um, that's something I'll be working on, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, but again, thank you for watching. Um, take a look at some links. Uh, like and subscribe if you could. And um, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode of Mushroom Chooses. And I look forward to seeing you on the trail.